Oh, folks, the FM24 beta is out right now. What that means is if you've got the game pre-ordered, you can be playing it right now. Not got it pre-ordered yet, don't worry. We've got you covered there. Pre-order, or I guess I guess it is still a pre-order. The full release isn't for a couple of weeks. So pre-order using my link at the top of the description below with Fanatical using discount code LALUJO, and you can get the game cheaper than it is on Steam, cheaper than it is at Epic, and play the game straight away. It includes the access to the early access that has launched right now and of course supports the channel as well so massively appreciated for those of you who've already done that and those of you who haven't you can be playing the game right now this evening link is at the top of the description below now of course the beta being out means it is the start of my beta save but first couple of little bits of housekeeping firstly giveaways we do them every year if you want to win a copy of football manager type in the comments yes please kev i'd like to win a copy of football manager or anything really i'm not going to read what you've written I'm just going to randomly pick someone from the comments and give that person a copy of FM24, including beta access. I'm going to do the same for one person who retweets the tweet that announced that this episode exists. I'll link to that in the description below so you know you're retweeting the right one, but literally just retweet, repost, whatever it's called these days. And you will also receive, one of you, only one of you, <laughs> will receive a copy of FM24, including the beta. And also, if we can hit six, 6,000 likes on this video tomorrow is a double upload day. We'll release an episode at 11 and an episode at four o'clock. We've done this the last three years now, I think. We've smashed through the likes target. So 6,000 likes and we will do double upload on this save tomorrow. I think that's all the housekeeping. Let's head to Brighton. And here we are then, manager of Brighton and Hove Albion, Kevin Chapman. Look at that beautiful in-game face they've given me as well. I... I, I mean, have I got an earring? I don't remember giving myself an earring. So eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the inexperienced, inexperienced 40-year-old. I'll take it. And he's sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media at, for the first time at the American Express Stadium. He replaces previous manager Roberto Di Zerbi, who apparently, I've heard, is quite good. And we need to try and emulate what he's been able to do over the last year or so with Brighton. We're going to be managing Brighton throughout the beta of FM24. So if you're looking forward to that, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on. You're not going to want to miss any of this stuff. And if you don't fancy Brighton, don't worry. I'm going to have a save on Twitch as well. I'm going to be managing Chelsea over on Twitch using the Your World mode and basically doing a, a rerun of this summer that's just gone. So I'll be live on Twitch later on this evening. So keep an eye there as well because you're going to want to hang out with me there as well. And of course, as ever, highlights of that will be on Lelujo too. Um, but here we have our welcome to Brighton message. So we're expected to finish eighth in the league. And that's the, that's the really tempting bit about Brighton. Of course, in real life, they had some significant big sales this summer just gone and didn't spend a huge amount of it we'll have a look at the transfers in and out in a moment um, but there's there's money to spend here at Brighton and I am eager to go and spend it and of course and Sufati knocking around the place as well on loan from Barcelona is going to be an interesting one, as is um, one of the most exciting wonder kids in FM24. We've got Evan Ferguson knocking around the place as well. But that is our best 11 here at Brighton. My initial my initial thoughts looking at that, uh, if we're going to play a 4-2-3-1, there's no guarantees that we will. But if we are, I think we probably need to replace James Milner. Um, I think we... Uh, we probably need to upgrade the goalkeeper as well. Maybe something at centre-back. We've got a lot of money to spend. We can strengthen in a lot of areas, but I don't think we necessarily need to strengthen the attack. Um, let's have a look at the actual squad itself. Let's go back in and uh, and have a look at that club vision just to check what I just agreed to without paying too much attention. So we need to maintain the club's global reputation, sign young players for a profit, very Brighton, and work within the wage budget, which should be uh, should be doable. We're within the wage budget at the moment. I mean, if we sign more than one or two players, we're probably going to have to move some transfer budget over to the wage budget. But other than that, I think that is very much doable. And the board are looking for me to finish top half, reach the knockout stages of the Europa League and be competitive in the domestic cups. You know what? For Brighton, that seems very, very achievable. Have they got better long-term goals for us? 
I mean, they're just happy for us to finish top half and have fun in Europe. I think we can do better than that. I reckon over the course of the beta, we can maybe we can definitely fit in two seasons, maybe a third season. We want to win something. I don't know that we're going to be able to win the Premier League in that time. Obviously, transfers work a little bit differently on FM24 to how they have previously. So it's going to be a little bit harder to do a Kev style re rebuild possibly. Um, and I don't know that the club needs it. There's a lot of very talented young players knocking around the place. If we have a look at the potential we've got at the club, uh, Facundo Buonanotti um, is someone I signed, I think, on the Apollon save years ago. Um, couldn't be that long ago. He's only 18. Am I making up that we've signed him previously? But he's already got a cap for Argentina at 18 and is worth potentially over 100 million. I've never even heard of Simon Adingra. Should I have heard of him? Maybe not. They signed him last summer. He's been out on loan, did very well in Belgium. Does he play regularly? I, I confess I don't watch a lot of Brighton in real life. Uh, Jeremy Sarmiento um, is on loan from West Brom. There's a lot of a lot of wingers. They love a winger here at Brighton. And CISO, who, if I recall, is injured in real life. Is he not? But he's another one with absolutely oodles of potential. Obviously, Ansu Fati. And then you've got Evan Ferguson, who at 18 is already an absolute beast if he's half the player he was in FM23. We saw in the world record save how much of a monster he is. But if he is half the player he was in that save, he is going to be a baby Haaland before too long. And there's even a decent young goalkeeper as well with potential. João Pedro, of course, at 21. Look at the age profile of this of this team, of these potential players. It looks like somebody's already come in and done a football manager style rebuild on them. There is so much potential here. I feel like I can only mess up. If we have a look at, at current ability to see how our star men are, Pascal Gross, but he's 32. That's old. That's really old. We're looking to replace you, Pascal. I'm sorry. Stupin Yan. Um, and this is the thing with uh, with Brighton once they get towards the top of the uh, of the current ability we are probably going to have to move players on we're going to have to carry on selling players for the profit the way way Brighton do so with Estupinian and Matoma both attracting interest and being some of our better current ability players maybe their players will look to move on not necessarily in this first summer because we've already done our outgoings this summer obviously 159 million pounds of a players sold most notably uh, McAllister and Caicedo the mid field was ripped apart and probably does need a li little bit of a rebuild um, because James Milner is a starter in there at the moment which doesn't it just doesn't feel right to me of course they lost Trussard as well back in January but certainly seem to have replaced him if we oh we can't look at squad planning yet can we um, let's just slap on a, an anything for now um, so if we look at the 4-2-3-1 just so that we can have a look at the squad planner I think we've got crazy depth in these wide areas and I like the fact on the squad planner you can can now look at depth and that really does tell the story we've already kind of identified from this Brighton squad we've got loads of depth in the wide areas not so much in the more defensive positions at fullback right back for example we've got James Milner there he ain't ever playing there Tarek Lamptey is only one and a half stars of current ability despite having a huge value and fairly decent potential I don't know that he's necessarily going to be someone that we're going to use. And Joel Veltman is 31 years old and really is a centre-back. So that's screaming to me that we probably need a right-back. We've only got two and a half stars for the right-back position. And also the weaknesses that we've already looked at. Goalkeeper, two and a half stars. The uh, the DM or central midfielder positions, whichever we end up doing in there. Um, only the two and a half stars. I think we probably have to play a four-forward system because of the amount of players we've got who can play in these attacking roles. If we limit ourselves to a front three, there's going to be some significantly talented players who are missing out. We've obviously got... I mean, you don't want to go and sign a striker because we've got Evan Ferguson. I also don't know that I want to be starting Danny Welbeck. We probably go straight with one of the three youngsters. Is Fatty... He doesn't have a future transfer. Does he have a future fee? Uh, <laughs> I mean, if we can get 857 million together, we could maybe sign Ansu Fati. We're probably not going to sign Ansu Fati permanently. Let's not rely too much on him, but there's huge strength in depth in the wide areas. Um, but we definitely need to get something more substantial in central midfield. What I am potentially thinking is the huge amount of depth that we've got in these wide areas might give us an opportunity to try out this uh, this new way of getting players out of the club. It was one of the things I just didn't have time to include 
in my uh, in my look at the game on the alpha. Um, but if we look at all these players who can play as wingers, that feels like that might be too many. And some of these are out. Let's get rid of the ones that are out on loan. Oh, hold on. So Sarmiento is on. He's not on loan from West Brom. He's on loan at West Brom. Learn to read, Kev. Let's assume I did that deliberately for YouTube engagement because now you're all going to tell me how wrong I am. But that's still a lot of wingers. I mean, if we discount Danny Welbeck, we've still got Ansu Fati, Mitoma. So that's your left-hand side. I mean, they're, they're your starters, I guess. Fati one side, Mitoma the other. You've then got Solly March, who's also three and a half stars of current ability. Jao Pedro, who I guess we probably play as the attacking midfielder or striker rather than out wide. Bueno Notti who I guess we have to give game time to because of his huge potential. Um, so that's, I mean, we've already got five that we're using there. And then these two have got five stars of potential as well. What do we do? Do we sell Mitoma? I mean, he's arguably our best player. However, we've got so much strength. I, I mean, I don't want to force any of these out. My instincts would be Welbeck and Solly March, but they're both long-serving players at Brighton, aren't they? March, that would be a riot if we got rid of one of their own. Um, and Danny Welbeck's never scored double figures. In it. I mean, what is that? How is he a striker? Um, and then you compare that to what we've got in central midfield, and it's clear where the problems lie because Gross and Lallana are attacking midfielders. Milner is 37 years old, and he's out on loan somewhere else. He's injured for five months. So we've only really got Dahoud and Billy Gilmore. That's definitely where we... Right, we need to do, we need to do some transfers. Let's figure out what we're going to do. So I kind of randomly stumbled across this as uh, as the tactic we'd just put in to get the squad planner working. But actually looking at what my backroom staff are suggesting, they're saying Tiki Taka or Vertical Tiki Taka. I'm kind of more of a fan of the Vertical Tiki Taka, I think. Um, but it's recommending a 4-3-3 on that, which... Doesn't really work. with. I think they're probably our two options. We can go with some of a DM. We don't really have one. We'd have to sign one. But I think we probably need to be looking around building for this formation. So if we've got Welbeck, uh, not Welbeck, Ferguson there. And then where is Mitoma? Why is Mitoma not there? Have we filtered out? We've only got central players on. That's why. So we want players who can play anywhere. Um, so if we have Mitoma on that side, who is a right footer, isn't he? So he's going to be playing as an inside forward. And then on this side, we'll have Ansu Fati, who we might try out this new winger instruction with him. So if we make Mitoma an inside forward on support, Ansu Fati can be a winger on attack. But we now have the new player instruction we can use on wingers where we can have him cut inside with the ball um, despite him being a winger. That wasn't available before. So it means he's going to start from a wider position, but then cut inside once he gets the ball um Saka style for Arsenal so I think we have him playing in the kind of Saka role for Arsenal Matoma can then be the inside forward on that side and that leaves Jao Pedro um if I can find him to play there so our front four I mean it will vary a little bit for rotation and stuff but I think our front four is pretty much set goalkeeper I'm not at all happy with any option we've got Verbruggen uh He's 20 years old. Do we just go with the 20-year-old kid? We might just go with the 20-year-old kid. He can play as a sweeper keeper, probably not on attack. Let's drop him down to a sweeper keeper on support. And this tactic, as standard, does have the inverted wing-back, inverted full-back setup. I don't actually think I'm going to use it in this save because I don't think Estupinian can do it. And he's our one of our best players and he doesn't he does not want to invert he is a left footer on the left hand side he plays best as a complete wing back or an attacking wing back rather than as an inverted wing back so i think we are just going to go with more traditional overlapping wing backs the way brighton play in real life the overlapping wing backs and the wide attackers who tuck in we're doing it deserby style so we'll have a wing back on support on that side who will be T TBA. May I mean I guess for now Lamptey. Lamptey is the one. Why can't I click on Lampt? Learn the con this this isn't even a new button. Tarek Lamptey can go there. And then Lewis Dunk is nailed on just there. And then we potentially have a vacancy alongside him. Um and 
mid- midfield. I mean, it's just the land of vacancies. I think we can we have a uh, Caicedo and McAllister would be nice in these two roles. <laughs> they'd they'd fit very nicely. So we need replacements for the two of those. I you know what. Uh, I'm taking Lamptey out as well. How do you... I don't remember. How, how do you unselect? I think we probably take Verbruggen out as well. Right click, Kevin. So that's our shopping list. Two central midfielders, a centre-back, a right-back, a goalkeeper. We've got £80 million to do it. Easy peasy. The one other thing we need to do is get our set pieces set up because obviously it's an exciting new feature. So let's have a look to see what we're going to be doing with our set pieces. Um... We're going to go with the staff preference on that. We are going to mark. I don't care what my uh, what my staff says. We're putting a man on the near post. It would be mad not to. Um, we'll go balanced with the players we're leaving forward. Um, we are going to... Who aims central? We're aiming near post. And then we will go balanced and we will do an in-swinger. And then we'll let him kind of do the rest. So if we look at our attacking options, you can see that's where the ball is going to be aimed for. Um, and then we've got a couple of guys in there and players floating around. If we preview with our current starting 11 obviously it's not fully populated with players yet um but uh we know we're going to have evan ferguson knocking around in this area we want we want, we want to be aiming at the center forward and the center backs when we're doing that we might put another version on that is a far post in swinger but we want to do the in the near post one a little bit more often and you know what Let's be re let's be really fruity and let's do a short in swinger as well, but we won't do that one very often at all. Um, we're going to leave sorting these bits out to the assistant manager or the set piece guy for now. We'll tweak them as we go, but I think I'm happy with that as our set piece instructions. And I think we've got a plan. So with a plan in place, my plan from here is to go and enact it, go and do it. So that's where this video comes to an end. Like I say, if you want to see part two, which will be those transfers out at an 80 million pound rebuild, if you want to see that tomorrow morning rather than tomorrow afternoon, have tomorrow as a double upload day, 6,000 likes on this video by the morning and you'll get that out in that 11 a.m. slot. If not, it'll be out at four o'clock. Don't worry too much. It'll be fine. But hopefully you have enjoyed that as just a little a little taster, a little tempter of what's going to be coming here on FM24. There is going to be loads and loads of content across both channels and Twitch over the next few weeks. So make sure you subscribe. You've got your notifications turned on. Like I said before, I am going to be live on Twitch in just a little while as well. So you can come and hang out with me over there where we're going to be getting our Chelsea Your World rebuild up and running as well. But for now, if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for me. So Subscribe to the channel for daily and then some football manager videos at the moment. And thank you very much for watching.